given her pomegranate and what she ate of it, it kind of confined her to having to return for three months out of the year. Um, and Demeter weeps every single time and feels that loss again when she has to give her child up again. She never really wanted her child to grow up. She never really, um, herself in a way, wanted to grow up. Uh, when you have a, ch a child that moves on in life, it kind of forces you to step further into your, uh, into your own growing up in a way. Um, you know, you've had, we have for, uh, the, uh, mythos involving, uh, the Lord and Lady where the moon goddess Selene is always seen as a maiden, a mother, and a crone, where the maiden is the one who's not had a child, the mother is the one who's had the child, and the crone is the one who has the empty nest, so to speak, and is supposed to be the wise woman. The crone can be kind of scary, and the fact that all of a sudden you're not taking care of everything around you and you don't have that support system of your own children, because they do become part of your support system if you're very close to your kids. Um, once they move out, you're starting to face the fact that you yourself are aging, that you yourself are becoming the crone, and you're having to step into a different role. And so sometimes I think, yes, we do have fear of what's going to happen to our own child, which is what Demeter was afraid of, too. Hades treated Persephone very well. She was his wife. But, you know, I mean, Demeter had her doubts. I can understand her doubts. Um, did she wonder if her child loved her? Um, all these things, which I'm pretty sure Persephone did. Um, but she had to face the fact that she was by herself suddenly and that she had to become this new creature herself. Uh, Demeter herself had to change. Um, she had to step into the wise woman role because per Persephone would be coming home and probably asking questions and asking support. If you apply this to a real world thing, which a lot of us mothers face right now, you know the kids are going to come back. I mean, we've done it to our own mothers. How many times have we called mom and said, oh my God, I got this going on and I got this going on and I got this going on. What do I do? What do I do? And you either get good or bad advice depending on your mother's own perceptions. But now it's our turn. When our children leave, it's our turn. And we have to decide... What kind of crone are we going to be? Are we going to be the wicked one that frightens away the children? Or are we going to be the wise woman that's going to make somebody want to come back and at least ask our advice and feel comfortable with us? And then are we going to feel comfortable with ourselves? Because the wrinkles are coming. The bones are not always as strong despite what we try to do medically. Um, there's always that risk. We do not have the body of the virgin and of the maiden anymore. We're not going to get the body back regardless if we're, um, you know, lifting weights and still being healthier than we were even back then. It's still not a young body anymore. And we have to face that too. Our children moving out, um, our winter time kind of shows us our own mortality. And I think that's kind of a scary thing for a lot of us parents to look at. So that's my take on the view of Demeter and on the view of Mary, who loses her child in a far more violent, unfortunate fashion um, as far as these old tales are concerned. I think Demeter is actually kind of a happier picture because Persephone does live. Um, and she isn't being tortured and she is being loved. Um, and uh, so I honestly think overall Mary's role was probably a little bit harder. And I may touch on her at another point. But anyway, you guys have a great night. I'm off to work. And I hope you guys enjoy sleep for me because it's nighttime. Talk to you later. Bye.